Great. Well, good morning. Um, this is a this is a really great day, and it's uh, it's beautiful. The sun is shining, uh, which is only right for the celebration that we're that we're gathering for today. Um, look, uh, on behalf of Lieutenant Governor Kim Driscoll and myself, our administration, we are just so psyched to be here. We're so psyched to be here alongside Mayor Michelle Wu, who has been a longtime champion of public transit. Uh, we're also joined today by our Secretary of Transportation, Monica Tibbetts-Nutt, our TGM, Phil Lang, our Chair, Tom Glynn, and members of the MBTA board, including Tom McGee. We have legislative partners and leaders from communities along this Fairmont line. Um, including Representative Rob Consalvo, Representative Brandy Fluker Oakley, Senator Liz Miranda, our City Council President Lucy Louisian, and uh, it's just it's just great. We thank you for all the all the advocacy. And speaking of advocacy, we have some amazing transit advocates who are with us and city residents. Our partners at Keolis, we want to thank you for all that you do and, and uh, the team's work in keeping our trains running. Um, we're here today because we have a goal and a vision, and that is to operate a 100% electric commuter rail system. It's for our climate, for our residents, and for our future. We also believe deeply in the principles of environmental justice and transportation equity. Our vision and our values come together today. And we're proud to say that the Fairmount line from South Station to Dorchester to Mattapan to Hyde Park will be the first commuter rail line in Massachusetts to provide 100% electric train service. That, uh, that is a big, big deal. It's been talked about for years. Senator Dracina Forey, you could attest to that. Um, and Senator Boncori. Uh, some of it's been talked about for years, uh, but, but we're doing it. We're finally doing it. And we're starting in the communities that need it and deserve it the most. This is a historic win for transit users who are gonna get faster travel times more frequent and reliable trains, and better access to jobs, to medical facilities and healthcare appointments, and the opportunities of downtown Boston. It's also a big win for communities that for far too long have borne the brunt of environmental injustices, from air pollution to noise pollution, from trains and vehicles of, of all kinds. And, that is what environmental justice looks like in practice today. I'm really delighted to be joined by the Commonwealth's first ever Undersecretary of Environmental Justice, Maria Boleyn Power, along with our Undersecretary for EEA, Catherine Antos. That is, um, that's how we, that's, that's the lens, that's how we do things. So this is a big win as well for the entire state of Massachusetts as we look to advance our climate goals and forge that path towards electrification of the entire commuter rail system. It builds on our momentum, it builds on our progress, and um, I'll just say our new state budget, remember, doubles our operating support for the MBTA, music to Phil's ears, including a reduced fare for low-income riders. We, we also recently secured big federal funding wins for things like uh, grid upgrades that will provide the kind of power that we need to keep electrifying and decarbonizing our entire economy. And our brand new Affordable Homes Act will fund energy efficient, transit oriented housing across the state. So big deal, uh, really, really exciting. 
Um, proud of the team uh, in our administration that's worked hard to go after and chase federal funds that are gonna help us get to where we need to go. We continue to benefit from um, those federal funds and, and it's really, really paying off. And you know, I just remind everybody, Massachusetts is a great state to live. We were recently voted number one for innovation, number one for education, number one for healthcare. And we, those are just some of the examples. We were recently voted the other day, number one place to live in the entire country. And part of that is about quality of life, how we treat people, respect for their rights and freedoms, and also quality of life, which gets to the air that you breathe and the water that you drink, and also the opportunities afforded to everyone. So I just wanna thank everybody for being part of Team Massachusetts, continuing to push our state forward um, and, and show what's possible. And certainly we've led when it comes to climate and this is a big, big deal today. Thank you to all at the T at Keolis um, DOT who have worked hard to, to see this uh, through operationally. And big time thanks to, to Mila Miles and Marilyn Foreman and Jared Johnson and all of the wonderful advocates who never ever gave up. With that, I'm gonna turn things over to our Secretary of Transportation, Monica Tibbetts-Nutt. Thank you, Governor Healy, and thank you, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll. As you can tell, this has been a long time coming. And as the governor said, there are many people to thank for being here today. But I think the big thing that this continues to reinforce is that this transportation system will continue to strengthen this economy and provide access to employment and especially access to housing for all of our residents and continue to make this one of the best places to live in the country. This is an amazing, amazing, amazing event today. And as you can see, many, many people helped to get us here. And I think that that really shows the commitment of this community, the commitment of these advocates and the commitment of our local officials. The fact that we are standing in this community, on this line, that many have worked so long and so hard to make affordable, and now making it the first of our electrified system. This really does underscore our commitment to climate change, our commitment to environmental justice, and especially when it comes to access to our transit system. The overall health of our communities are paramount to our success. As the governor and lieutenant governor are constantly driving home, Housing, education, and transportation are what makes this an amazing place to live. And thank you to General Manager Ng and his team for really getting this across the line. This has been a long time coming. And this team, this administration, are the ones that actually made this possible with the support of all the many people that have been fighting for this for a very, very long time. So I just wanna thank everyone for being here today and really thank this administration and this group of advocates for making not only this community better, but really setting the standard for the rest of the Commonwealth. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, and thank you for joining us today as we celebrate a significant milestone for the MBTA, the communities that we serve, as we take a major step forward towards protecting our environment for future generations to come. I'd like to thank Governor Healy, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, Secretary tippetts nutt for their leadership, and as the governor said, Team Massachusetts, all of our partners from the entire state delegation, the city council members, Mayor Wu and your, your administration, the Fairmont Line delegation, all the advocacy groups, um, it takes a team, and that's why we're able to stand here today to be talking about this exciting uh, feature that we're moving forward with. I'd also like to thank the MPTA board, uh, Chair Glynn, uh, board members uh, McGee, Smart, and Skelton Roberts are here today, but the entire board has been instrumental in helping us at the T as we make crucial decisions on how to improve service, how to protect our environment, um, and deliver the, the types of services that the public deserves and expects. So we're also here with a common goal um, to make transportation even more sustainable. Data does tell us that transportation, including automobile travel, makes up 38% of the total emissions from Massachusetts. That's a top contributor. And while the T is responsible for 1% of that, we want to do better, and we know we can do better. And this transition to battery electric multiple unit trains, two cars in a set, will only deepen the climate benefits that we provide to the transit system, the communities that we serve, making our system even more sustainable or cleaner. 
And BEMUs will cut fuel use by 1.6 million gallons annually and nearly 18,000 tons of CO2. We want mass transportation options to be reliable, safe. We want it to be the preferred choice. We want people to be able to use this and get out of their vehicles. So battery electric fleet will accelerate quicker, run quieter, deliver more reliable service. It is a benefit. It's a win-win for everybody. And the trains, when this is all said and done, we are looking at 20-minute frequencies between trains on this corridor. That is a huge win. So while this is a major step, it's just the beginning of the MPTA's environmental justice, sustainability, and greenhouse gas mitigation efforts. Implementation of the BEMUs on the Fairmont line will serve as a model for future electrification efforts across our network, paving the way for more environmentally friendly and efficient transit system. So thank you again to the community that has advocated for this change to happen. Thank you to Mila Bush, Marilyn Foreman, Jared Johnson, Reggie Ramos for being among the many advocates and others who have always championed public transit, including greener public transit, like we're proposing here and will deliver on Fairmont Line. And without supporters of this team, we might not be here today. The T is looking forward to co-creating a more environmentally friendly, conscious transit system for the entire Commonwealth and we can't wait to deliver this and set the example for the other corridors. Thank you very much. I think with that, I'd like to invite Mayor Wu to the podium. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much, General Manager Eng, and to the entire Healy Driscoll administration for all of your leadership and partnership. Today's a good day to be here. We are, uh, I am so thrilled to be able to stand alongside this incredible group You'll see, uh, as mentioned, that it includes the hardworking leaders who are fighting every day to catch up on the work that has been left after decades of deferred investment and so much to do. This administration is making strides, unlike we've ever seen before, to make sure that Massachusetts and Boston has the system that we deserve, and we're so thankful for their efforts. I want to thank the board as well. I think uh, Chair Glynn and uh, all the board members, including our, our Boston leader on the board, Ms. Mary Skelton Roberts. Uh, we know it's not glamorous work, but you are, you are nose to the grind every single day. And we are starting to feel the results of that progress. Thank you so much. And um, to my uh, elected colleagues in elected office, who I'm always honored to stand alongside, Senator Miranda and uh, Reps Consalvo and uh, birthday rep Fluker Oakley today, happy birthday, um, as well as Council President Li Zhen and City Council Enrique Pepin, thank you for all that you do. We know transportation is always uh, interwoven with all of the advocacy that we see. Uh, and most of all, it says something when we have an advocacy community gathered here who represent not just those who are fighting primarily for transportation, access, and transit justice, not just the environmental and climate advocates, but not just our small business advocates, I see Sue here as well, but our neighbors, our community leaders, those who represent the residents who built up these neighborhoods and who, are, who have been fighting for generations to make sure that the service improvements, the benefits will go to those who can then be able to stay, be able to afford Massachusetts and Boston, and be able to contib continue contributing to our communities here. We know that in Boston, to make our city a home for everyone, that means taking the big steps that are going to ensure everyone's safety and stability in a time of great disruption around climate change and the economy and all else that our families are juggling. But it's also about recognizing all the ways in it that these issues are connected. And so when we take an action like this, to be able to electrify, for the first time ever, one of the last remaining diesel commuter rail uh, lines in the country, it's not just about saying the words to be a green community. This is about tangible benefits that our residents who live here, that workers who are getting to their jobs, that visitors and tourists and everyone we welcome in our community will be able to feel every single day. It's connected critically to everything else that we're doing around the city and along these MBTA lines as well. The community and cultural spaces from the Muni and the Strand Theater to our public libraries, green spaces like the Neponset River and Hunt Almont Park, business districts in Cleary and Logan Squares, along Blue Hill Ave and South Bay, 
By last summer, the Fairmount line had re recovered 130% of its pre-COVID ridership. At, that's right. As of today, that number is up to 160%. So back way above what it was pre-COVID. This line is a lifeline for so many of our residents and workers. And what we're celebrating here today goes beyond just this urgently needed step to modernize the commuter rail. Cleaner air, quieter trains, more reliable subway-like service, this will transform the opportunities for our residents and all who call Boston home. We are so proud to continue working with the MBTA, the governor, lieutenant governor, and all our partners at the state and city to make this a success. And now I'm honored to pass it over to State Senator Liz Miranda. Good morning on this very hot and nice day here in Mattapan. As you can see, I tried to wear my indigo uh, and my purple for what we call in the neighborhood the purple line. Um, all the years that I've been in the legislature, you know, I've been working on advocacy along with my colleagues in the coalition that stands behind me. Um, and it's been a long time coming, as the secretary said. Um, and I want to thank uh, Senator Collins, who couldn't be here, but I saw a staffer because when I first got in the legislature, um, he said, you take, the fir you take the Fairmont line, do you know about the Fairmont line? I said, well, growing up, I'd rather take two buses and a train at the speed that the Fairmont line, the purple line used to take, and now we don't have to wait for two buses and a train anymore. We can actually take uh, the commuter rail and the Fairmont line all the way to downtown, not only uh, waiting only 20 minutes, but to make sure that it gets to downtown quicker so we can get to work or get to school. We know our community is disproportionately impacted by preventable chronic disease, this paper is not trying to leave me today, uh, including asthma. And we know that electrification would lead to better, better public health outcomes while spurring the economic mobility so many have spoke about before me. Every resident in this commonwealth deserves access to safe, reliable, healthy transit. And we know that this is not just a transit equity issue, it's an EJ issue, it is also a racial justice issue. We know who lives along the Fairmount line. And this decision actually centers the very communities that we come from, that we legislate for and we work with and keeps them at the forefront. I wanna give a special thanks uh, to my co-filer, uh, Representative Brandi Fluka Oakley. She is celebrating a birthday today and she's here because this is a very important issue. She grinds at the State House so much. Um, and all the folks that are standing behind me, we mentioned Mela, we mentioned Ms. Foreman, uh, Ms. Barbara's here, and Jared. These are the people that have been communicating with us since day one about the need to not only make the Fairmont line quicker, but to make it safer by improving lighting, um, improve, improving the speed that it goes to. And you guys have worked tremendously along our side. I've lived on this Fairmont line my entire life between New Market and Upham's Corner. And for many years, I would not take the Fairmont line. It was scary, it took too long, it was dirty. Um, but we can see that this administration um, has centered not only our communities, but the Fairmont line, not only with this decision, but the decisions they've made before and the decisions that they will continue to make. I wanna thank all my colleagues for being with me today, the governor, the lieutenant governor, the secretary, uh, the board of directors for taking this vote on this pilot, which we're really excited about. Um, and thank the board of directors of the uh, Fairmont Indigo Coalition. I know some of you are behind us, um, but they've been working not only to push for uh, better outcomes on the Fairmont line, but entire, the entire system and the communities along the Fairmont line. So thank you. Today's a really good day and I'm excited and I'm going to pass it to my colleague, uh, Representative Randy Fluker Oakley. Um, good morning, everyone. I uh, just want to thank several people briefly. Um, a lot of policy work is not in front of the scenes. I often say the work that we do is not a tweetable moment. And so uh, the folks I'm going to name so graciously took my phone calls, responded to my messages, responded to my follow-ups because it took a lot of legwork and it takes a lot of legwork and we all work together. So I want to thank uh, Governor Healy for all of her support, uh, Lieutenant Driscoll, Secretary Tibbetts-Nuts. I had the privilege to testify in front of the MBTA board. Thank you for approving this measure so that we could be here today. Uh, to all of my legislative colleagues, the Keolis for their dedication to community and their ingenuity. And most importantly, when I ran back in 2020, I said, we in community know what we need in order to thrive. In this moment, this movement, in order to have this train electrified, and quite honestly, to have this train even stop to pick us up, 
because without a history, the people perish. You all have to understand that this train ran through our black community regularly and did not stop to pick us up. I need you to think about that. A diesel train running through a predominantly black and brown community, not even having the intentionality to pick us up, to let us go to work, polluting our communities. Boston Public Health Commission says that we in Mattapan have the highest asthma rate, and but for the leadership of then rep, then Senator uh, Linda Dracina Fori, uh, Senator Nick Collins, Jack Hart, and so many others, and community members who said, no, y'all need to stop and pick us up. So that's how we got the Paramount Line in the first place, and we have to acknowledge that. So I want, thank you. And while there are many community leaders who worked on this, I had the privilege of working closely with Marvin Martin, Marilyn Foreman. I don't know if Kendra Beaver is here of the Fairmont Indigo. Uh, there you go, Kendra, the quarterly Zoom calls. What are we gonna do next? Who do we gotta talk to? How are we gonna move this forward? Like it's a community, it took all of us coming together. My beloved uh, Civic Association, as I live right down the street, West Selden is here. So thank you, Barbara Critchlow, Olivia Poles as well. Um, and why this matters is so often as a black community, by the example I just gave, we're forgotten. We contribute to our society and we're known to be invisible. And I wanna thank this administration for ensuring that this black community is not invisible any longer by electrifying this line. It's no surprise, it's been said before, if we're gonna meet our climate goals, we absolutely have to modernize our transportation infrastructure. And I wanna thank the MBTA for their commitment to that and Keolis for being such a wonderful partner in moving this forward. I also wanna highlight as a rider of the Fairmount line, when I have to be at the State House, I am on this train. I get it down the street, Blue Hill Ave, but I am on this train. And it represents our entire community. From our age strong people who are trying to get to appointments, you'll see our middle schoolers and high schoolers on this train in order to get to school and from school and to and from work. You'll also see some of our new arrivals as they try to navigate the social services that are available to them offered on this line. This line represents all of us and y'all. I have some of Milton. Our Milton allies ride this line too. I too see them on the train headed downtown to go to work, okay? This line, there it is. <laughs> this line represents all of us. This line represents all of us. It provides a safe and quick transportation method for our communities, and it is a vital artery that is so, so necessary. I don't have anything else to say because it's already been said, but again, thank you to this administration. Thank you to all of the community members who fought so hard for this, and this is the best birthday gift ever, so thank you. <laughs> I was so excited. John Colleen, VP of Asset Management, Keolis. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. One second. Uh, thank you, Governor Healy, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, Secretary Tibbetts Nutt, Mayor Wu, General Manager Eng, Senator Miranda, and other state and local officials for joining us here today. Just one moment. Also, thank you to state local officials and MBTA board members for coming here today uh, for this special occasion. Keolis is thrilled that the MBTA has placed their trust in us to oversee the delivery of this major project to transform the Fairmont line. Keolis partners with uh, transit agencies all over the world and brings their experience to help them deliver their goals, whether that be electrification, decarbonization, or modernization. We chose to submit an innovation proposal because we have the skills and we have the knowledge to deliver this project quickly and efficiently. Keolis will manage this project, including the uh, procurement of financing, the choosing of the rolling stock, and the upgrade of engineering facilities, infrastructure, and maintenance facilities. We will bring our international skills and expertise to ensure that this project is a success. And we hope to have electric trains operating on the Fairmont line as early as 2028. Now the community surrounding the Fairmont line will see less pollution and a much more frequent service as a result of this transformation. It will also allow us to work with the MBTA 
to chart the future. Let's just say it'll be quieter in 2028. Uh, it will allow us to work with the MBTA to chart the future electrification and decarbonisation of the commuter rail system, a key goal of the Healy Driscoll administration. I'd like to say thank you to the Fairmont Indigo Transit Coalition and all community members and local officials who work tirelessly to make this project a reality. We are so excited to work on this project and look forward to defining a new chapter on the Fairmont line. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm handing over to uh, Marilyn Foreman. Apologies, Mella Miles. Thank you. Yes, I'm Mella Miles. <laughs> I'm so glad to be here. This is amazing. I want to thank a few people uh, who are here. Uh, one specific person is Marvin Martin, who I worked for in, in 2006. He's standing over there. He's, always, he's not always in front of cameras. Um, uh, I walked into the office when I started working for Greater Four Corners Action Coalition, and he said, you're doing the FAM outline. I was like, oh, okay. So um, I want to thank all of our advocates, all of our residents along the line, all of them, some of whom are here today and hope to get into some um, photos, who fought all of these years. Back in 1987, the T was going to shut the line down. Uh, because they had finished building out the Southwest Corridor. And so, but the residents rose up and said, no, we have a right to a ride. We need to be able to get where we need to go. And this thing is running right through our community. And as many of uh, folks who came before me, polluting the air, you know, we wanted to get on the train so that we could get to where we needed to go. And not just to the hospital for asthma treatments because there was way too much diesel pollution while the trains were shuttled, not just the trains that you see stopping here, all of the trains going to be stored, stored in the Reedville yard were going up and down this line and, and dropping exorbitant amounts of diesel particulates on our communities and making us sick. When I was a little girl, Marilyn and I grew up in Four Corners and the only trains that we saw going by were occasional freight trains and the circus train going to bring the animals. So animals <laughs> going to the Bonham and Bailey, Bailey Circus were on circus trains, and we couldn't even get on the train. So an animal from a faraway place had better rights than we did. So now we had many campaigns. We had uh, the um, Fair Fairs for Fairmount. We had a number of different campaigns. And there's somebody who's not here today, Mike Capuano, who um, gave free rides a few years back while he was in office so that we could actually understand that we had, this was for us. This was not just the purple line that was going through here, that was for somebody else. And so he gave free rides and saw the uh, ridership go up because people started understanding why, what this was and that it was our train. In 2013, we cut ribbons on three train stations. In 2019, we cut ribbons for the, uh, we cut the ribbon for the Blue Hill Ave coming station. And we saw all of the culmination of these things. We lowered fares. We got um, weekend service. We, we fought for night and um, early morning and late night service. And the T actually and, and Keolis worked with us to make that happen by activating trains that were going through here with crews on them, but weren't picking anybody up. So we got eight more, uh, eight more service trains to pick us up. Things like that. This is what we were fighting for and saying, hey, MBTA. And so, like the governor said, Team Massachusetts. Teamwork makes the dream work. And because we all got together in, in, in uh, the, the legislature passing bills and governors signing legislation into effect to fund this, this is how we were able to be here today to see the culmination of this. And in four years, you know, in my lifetime, I hope to see those battery electric trains. I'm, I'm like gonna cry. Um, I'm so excited that we'll be able to see this happen. My three grandchildren, my two grandchildren were there when we put shovels in the ground at Four Corners 
to do the groundbreaking ceremony. And I had a little tiny boy next to me who actually was there. He's 21 years old now. His name is Jaden. And he said, why am I doing this, Nani? And I said, you're going to go down in history because this train station is going to be here for a really long time. And you were here on the day that we put the shovel in the ground. And so now we're here for this moment where the train line is going to be electrified. And we're so excited. And I'm really glad. And thank you to everyone. All of my, Linda was there when we cut the ribbon, Linda Dorsina Fori. And uh, Mayor Menino, there were people who were there cutting those ribbons in 2013 who are no longer with us, but some who are. And we're just so happy that we could be here to celebrate this auspicious and momentous occasion. Thank you so much. Good morning, winners. Yes, the governor said that Boston is number one in all of it. We may not be in Paris at the Olympics, but we all get the gold medal. We're the winners, right? Okay, all right. I'm Marilyn Foreman, and I'm one of the co-chairs for the Fairmont Indigo Transit Coalition. And this is a very exciting day, and hopefully we'll see all of these beautiful pictures in our history books when the kids bring them home, the grandkids, and it's like, yep, there I was, and there's our governor, and there's our lieutenant governor, and there's our state reps. It's a wonderful, wonderful day. And so this, what this, uh, this line, being electrified, means is more than I can even explain. Um, but I think everybody else did a really good job at doing that, so I probably don't need to. But what I do want to say is I work for the Codman Square Neighborhood Development Corporation, and what we do is we build affordable housing. We build transit-oriented development housing along the line so that residents can have access now that the Fairmont Line is there to jobs, to family members, to recreation, and all the different locations along the line, all the different stops. And there's so much wonderful activity happening there. So I just really want to say um, thank you to all of those who made this possible. Thank you for that bond bill stuff that you did, Governor. It was wonderful. Um, and now we can build more housing. We're doing our part at the NDC by decarbonizing those units. So along with the electrified line, people live health healthy lives where they live, the food they eat, the trains they ride, the buses they ride. Boston is the place to be, and we're winners. Um, I don't want to uh, start calling out thank yous because I'm going to mess up and forget people. But yes, um, Daryl Smith, and I, I didn't hear anybody mention Daryl, but Daryl Smith has been like one of those forerunners, right? He's been there leading us all the way. And um, our senator, our senator has been there all the time um, doing all of the work. Uh, Russell Holmes, I don't see him here. And uh, I said I wasn't going to call out names because I was going to mess up. But anyway, um, yeah, we're doing such a great job as partners in this work to make where we live, where we work, where we play, where we worship a desirable, pla a desirable place for everyone, for our children, our grandchildren, and all those who will come after. So thank you everybody for their part in doing what you do every day to bring this to reality to fruition and I just can't wait till it's done but we still have so much more to do and maybe just maybe because we work with some amazing people it'll happen before 2028 <laughs> thank you so much and now I will hand it over to Jared Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm so excited to be here uh, with so many amazing folks, governor, lieutenant governor, mayor, our, our senators, our representatives, uh, the general manager, the secretary, chair, so many folks. Uh, but I, I'm thrilled today that the governor is not only fulfilling a campaign promise, but making real the promise of transit equity uh, for neighborhoods that have long awaited it. This is more than just a transportation project. This is a transformative effort that will drive economic growth, spur more housing, uh, enhance the entire MBTA. So today we take a significant step forward uh, to bringing cleaner air to neighborhoods that have been burdened for too long uh, with high rates of asthma and other respiratory illnesses. Uh, and it's not just the cleaner trains that will make a difference, but it's also the 20 minute service that will give people more transit options, taking cars off of the road and reducing pollution. And this initiative brings us closer to realizing the regional rail vision. 
Uh, the success of the Fairmount line proves that when you improve service and frequency, ridership follows. This line already goes far beyond the traditional nine to five commute. This is a lifeline for kids heading to school at Hyde Park uh, or going to the Croc Center, uh, for, family, for people going to medical appointments or for families just going to a movie uh, at South Bay. This line is the future of commuter rail. And I think that regional rail is likely the most transformative investment that the Commonwealth can make. Uh, it's going to shrink eastern and central Massachusetts by bringing the region closer together, uh, by cutting travel times, and I think expanding the, this 20 minute service to more lines will give people more choices uh, and will uh, help us and will bring us in line with cities around the world that have recognized uh, the power and the potential of fast, frequent electrified train service. So from suburban job centers uh, to gateway cities uh, to growing urban neighborhoods, this bi-directional all day frequent service uh, is going to help low income residents and drive economic growth across the region while helping us tackle congestion and housing challenges. So let me close with a heartfelt thank you uh, to Governor Healy, uh, the Secretary, uh, General Manager Ang, and his staff for putting equity first uh, by putting the Fairmount line first. Uh, and I want to give a special thank you to Keolis for their ingenuity and creativity in bringing electrified service to Boston sooner. Yeah. <laughs> On behalf of Transit Matters, uh, from Man Indigo Transit Coalition, we really appreciate uh, this partnership. And so I can't wait to see the first electrified train roll through here. Uh, 2028 will be here before we know it. Thank you. Um, thank you so much, Jared. I also want to acknowledge Representative Worrell is with us this morning. And again, many thanks to our legislative colleagues for their leadership. Um, and for the investments that they made through various pieces of legislation, the last couple of budgets we've done, uh, the bonding bills, we really, really appreciate it. And particular uh, thanks, I know we all join in thanking our advocates and to listen to uh, Mella and, and Marilyn and Jared, um, you know, but, but Mella and Marilyn, the way you, you just articulated what this experience has been in this journey um, and, and what we're able to collectively announce today is, is really, really special. So um, we are committed. I speak on behalf of Secretary Tibbetts Dunt, GM Ang, uh, the LG, and, and our administration. We're going to do everything we can, pedal to the metal on all of this. You know, our job is to deliver things on time, under budget, where we can. Um, we've been doing that, um, clearing up slow zones, knocking those down. And this is a commitment we made, and we're going to see that through. And, and we'd, uh, we'd love to beat 2028. So we're going to work with our Keolis partners uh, in all of that. Um, with that, we're going to um, we're going to turn it over. Any any questions on topic? I mean, I think we've been a team that said from day one, you know, we are going to be a number one state, and we are. We're getting a lot of number one ratings right now. It's a place that people want to live in if they can afford it. And that's why we focused on housing. It's why we focused on transportation. Um, you saw recently with the surtax uh, receipts that we're able to make even more investments in transportation. You see with the help of the legislature what we were able to do in, in the recent budget in terms of more, um, uh, more support for the investments. We got after it hard starting 18 months ago, hiring 1,500 workers at the T. So, you know, we're not going back. We're full steam ahead. We recognize the realities of, of the situation and, um, in the in the in the financial picture, uh, but I am committed to working with the GM, working with the secretary, working with the board, working with the legislature to figure out the best path forward. But public transit is key to our economic growth and development, to opportunity, and to Massachusetts competitiveness. Governor, when does the service start? The electrification. How frequently will it be? And what will the fare be compared to what the fares were prior? On well, right now, the way we ent we're looking at the schedule, um, and I think John Clean mentioned it, we're looking at the delivery of the first battery electric cars to come in early 2028. Uh, we would love to beat that schedule, and we're going to monitor very closely to do that. Um, right now, we're running every 30-minute frequency. The intent with once we have these cars in-house and the locomotives, uh, the, all the vehicles and the, uh, the equipment, is to run every 20-minute frequency in both directions 
Um, that's what brings people back, safe, reliable, frequent service. That's where we're headed towards. Regarding fares, that's a, that's a, that's a discussion that has to be taken in, in holistic with regards to not only this corridor, but all of our system. Um, there's, there's so much more ahead as, as we start to solve problems, deliver service, and make it affordable for folks. Well, what we're looking at is, as we rebuild our system, and it's not just the commuter rail, uh, but the rest of our infrastructure, um, allows us to better manage our resources, maintain our system in a state of good repair. Um, so as we renew, the key is to stay on top of new facilities, new rolling stock, and maintain them in a manner that reduces costs, reduces the need for replacement. Overall, as we improve reliability, we do see our costs will go down. Uh, with the emergency responses, the demand response, uh, those things that are un unscheduled cost more for us to do. So the goal is to continue to renew our infrastructure, renew our fleet. This will drive costs down. It will drive ridership up. I think those things go hand in hand with helping us be able to be uh, a more sustainable public transit system for everybody. Well, right now we're excited about, and thank you to the administration, the legislature, funding for um, income eligible fares. That is half price fare that we will be, uh, that the board approved, um, that we're ready to launch um, uh, as early as next week in terms of some applications, and then very shortly um, in-person applications. That is across all modes of travel, which is really a big win for those folks that need it. Making our system more affordable, in addition to be safe and reliable, they go hand in hand with um, supporting people that need to get to different places, whether it's for fun, whether it's for work, whether it's for medical appointments. Um, we want public transit to be uh, equitable, affordable, and, and uh, frequent for everyone. Uh, well, the key about battery electric or even electric as we go into this is we can take these units and when we receive them and start trying them on other corridors. There's already areas on our Providence line that have electrification. Uh, the environmental justice corridor along the Newburyport-Rockport line is another area that we're already looking at. How do we improve service on that, including electrification? Um, so this is just the beginning. This is a peek into the future, but we're bringing it within our lifetimes, and that's the key. How do we use the dollars we have available to start moving in the direction that we've talked about for too long? This is the first step of many, and we're excited to be able to share more as we look at how to implement this across other corridors. And technology is getting better. So we know that this technology works in other parts of the world. Um, the key is now how do we make it work here for us? And that's what this first step does, and we're excited about Fairmont Lane. Okay. Um, thanks, everybody. Great day. Congratulations to all involved. Phil, you wore your purple. I love that. <laughs> there we go. And we cued the deer the car right right on time that was nice right? wasn't that did you get that did you guys get that in your cameras nice i want to see that tonight on tv it's going it's good all right um have a good day all and make sure you drink a lot of water it's warm today take care Thank you.